Check this out. New toy. Oh, yes. And it's got a home. Never had a meter potentially this accurate in my life. It is a, a step up from the fluke. So pretty cool. I like it. I didn't show for this uh, voltage standard in any videos yet. These are just a cheapie, right about $20 Canadian. I got the AD584M and this meter. Finally, I get something that shows me all the digits. So an 80,000 plus count meter, we can go up to eight volts ish. We have four digits after the decimal place. So awesome. Precision belongs to me. I'd like to start dealing with this mess now. And this microscope has always been kind of a stuffed in here and the bag over it looks like heck. I think it's time to fix that. Just whip something up in Fusion, I think. We'll make a cap that goes over it. And then we just don't need the bag anymore at all. Something that'll look a lot nicer. So 105 millimeters ish, kind of around the edges and make a cap. I like sketching things out in these cheap notebooks from Dollar Store. They kind of help me out and remember things. And I picked this up from the Curious Mark channel, started using pencil, and then I can actually use the eraser. It seems to help me get my brain around things. So we'll draw this up. I don't know, maybe I'll put some embossing or something on it, but I guess those are basic dimensions. We'll just graph this, just do a sketch in Fusion. We'll just outline it and then we'll just extrude it. No problem. Not too bad. I don't think this will ever get old. Just pick up a functional part off the printer. So cool. From the humble sketch, we have a functional part. Now we can get rid of these silly covers and have something that looks like it belongs. That'll be a lot nicer. I got a lot of these wires cleaned up last night so that I can actually reach in and grab the ones I want, mostly for debugging. Now I can clean this up a little bit more. And that is just what the doctor ordered. With the Apollo Disky project, our Pi 4 should be able to live right down in here. And what I found is the easiest is to just take the hot air rework station to clean up this plastic. Um, the support material left a little bit of goobers behind, so we'll just mop that up. Like that. Our Pi has a home in our diski. So I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the USBs. Lots of room on those ones, but our power, our video and power are gonna be a problem. We just gotta figure it out. Minor thing, yeah, we're there. It's coming together. So the main thing with the diski is to have a human machine interface. And for that, we need some keys. These are the mechanical keyboard switches that I got from Amazon. We'll put them all into the 3D printed piece and then set our drivers on top and put everything into the frame. Should work. These switches are a perfect fit in here. They are quite snug, but they just snap right into place with a little bit of force with two hands. I'm pretty happy about that. I can't complain. Pretty awesome fit. Pretty satisfying. I don't think I'm gonna have any troubles with the key actuation. Those are, uh, it doesn't even need any guide. That's pretty cool. Nice tight fit. Sits vertical. Should work. And we're going to fire up and program the Raspberry Pi for the Disky project. And this is the bin I use of just my 
a small keyboard, mouse, and a little HDMI monitor that I just keep separate just for the pies. So uh, this is just a, a vanilla install. We'll just do Raspbian. We'll enable VNC and SSH. And then we won't need a, we'll be able to go headless. We won't need a monitor anymore. Just like that, we're into the desktop. Nothing to it. Pretty vanilla install. We'll just go ahead through the basic steps of it. We have a portable uh, HDMI projectors. And I think what we'll do is we'll have a projector that we take with this Disky project. I'll run this HDMI out the side of the Disky and then we can project the simulator over on the display screen, which I think will be pretty cool. Success! The Pi is updated, even did a nifty little Apollo background, completely ready to go with SSH and VNC so I can just tunnel into the Pi and do whatever updates I want. Also worked on the layout for the keyboard. I think I've got the matrix figured out for this with the diodes and how we're going to run rows and columns into the Arduino. Uh, the original designer of this project didn't actually post his wiring, just a link to this kind of matrix style. I think I got it figured out. It should work good. And I even been playing with a new meter and oh, I'm loving this. I was finally able to get my step file for my PCB right into Fusion for the model and with all the resistors and everything showing the key. Substitute similarly named models when you export your step file and then you get an awesome view like this of the PCB that fits into your model. Pretty cool. Christmas from PCB way. Here's our awesome disky enunciator panels. Check this out. Saturn V. Look at that silk screen. Isn't that cool? Got a moon, some lettering, little flog for the YouTube channel, our labeling for our connectors, and I am just tickled with these. That's awesome. This was just a standard order on their site. The silver uh, solder finish and just gloss black and white silk screen. And you can just buy these just by leaving everything as the normal options on the web page and uh, just hit checkout and this is what you'll get. Still finishing up, working out the button strategy here. I may do a PCB, but uh, for now, I think what we'll do is we'll just cut the leads off of this is just an old rat shack, the resistor assortment, and we'll just make buses with resistor leads. And I'm still waiting for the SMD LEDs to arrive for the disky. So uh, I can't do that, but you guys, uh, I posted a poll on YouTube and it sounds like you guys are interested in a hot plate. Uh, use of those. So uh, instead of the reflow oven, um, we'll maybe do some, we'll do the first one on the hot plate because that's what you guys requested. Doing a quick load test on the 18650 battery that lives in my video doorbell. It seems to be suffering a little bit lately. So we'll see what it can actually do. But this is where this high accuracy meter now, we can actually see exactly what's going on with our battery during a load test and uh, actually see the movement uh, real time. The extra digits are pretty darn cool to have. And next morning, 3.3004 and 2348. 2348 milliamp hour out of that 18650. So now I know, and I can actually measure exactly how long it lasts, but pretty cool. 3.3005. Lots of decimal places. Kind of neat. And we have the stand coming off on the CR10 for the Nova dog project. This will be a 3D printed robot dog that will uh, be like the Boston Dynamics one. Uh, this is required to work on the thing to keep the feet off the ground. Coming off pretty good. Not bad. Pretty cool. That should do the trick. That's heavy. That's 200 grams of filament, so that's heavy. That's a, that's pretty sturdy. Yeah, that's really, really, really sturdy. 15% infill, so that should hold up our robot dog. New one for the CNC. This is the case that it's going to live in, or so I hope. This it seems kind of flimsy, but it should go together all right and just give it an enclosure to keep the dust from flying around in the garage.
And this is where the CNC enclosure ends up. That's pretty cool. This is a Gen Mitsu if I didn't show it before, but we have like, just to keep the dust down in the garage, this isn't gonna live here in the house because it just throws too many chips, but I run the external controller out the side and yeah, the only kind of critty thing is my knobs won't fit. The case is too small, so I had to take them off, which is really too bad. That'll go out to the garage and uh, we can start cutting. It's finally time. Pretty cool though, I kind of like that. That's a slick little rig. Anyway, it'll contain a little bit of dust. Just finished up a live stream on me me TV and where you worked on the disky keyboard a little bit here. I'm getting there and what we've got to do now is some diodes to the rows. So we've got the columns set up and then we're going to do rows and then this will work for our entire keyboard for our, our Arduino 32U4 which will basically just do keyboard emulation. It should work. The only thing I'm not sure about is how we're going to bring these end ones in but pretty cool. Oh a chat client worked. This is the ESP32 display and we used it for the live stream, which is way over here. And this is way, way easier and it worked. The ESP32 just worked flawless. I love this setup now. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm so happy. I'm also incredibly pleased with this meter. Oh man, that is a score. Well, she ain't pretty, but she's done. We've got the matrix all set out with our rows and columns, diodes going out of each switch to the bus. The only thing I have to figure out is these ends on how they bus in. Uh, I haven't figured out that chunk of the wiring from the original to match the code. Uh, I can just use some jumpers, just some clip leads and figure it out so that I can just match it to the code or I can wire it and then change the code. But either way, it should be fine and we're good to go. All right, I finally got it. I've been working with this Prusa slicer and I've seen other people posting on Twitter that they're having trouble with the support material too. Uh, I was like crazy. I couldn't get this to work without it generating silly support material outside the smooth surfaces. Finally found the setting. I found multiple settings and I got these results and I'll post it over an overlay on the screen here. And uh, I thought I was in expert mode in Prusa Slicer. I wasn't. And within expert mode, there's this stupid setting enabled to make this draft shield or whatever for the support material. It's totally garbage. This is my Raspberry Pi W case that we're going to turn into a cool project that's going to live here on the bench. I just got to remove this support material now and it's no problem. It's just going to punch right out. I can see it's just going to be perfect and no damage on the outside. Finally. And that is the final result. All that support material just falls out of there and leaves nice crisp edges and no issues at all. So happy with that. Finally, uh, their Prusa Slicer settings are in my GitHub. There's something immensely satisfying about setting these inserts into place and then melting them in. It's just... I don't know. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm really happy on how this is coming along now. Just let these warm up a little bit and then just let them just sink on in until they find their home. Just like that. Done. So I had to redesign this LED circuit board tub a little bit. I put some standoffs in there. Turned out just beautiful. Prusa slicer for the win. We fit a little bit better. Old, new, and it fits the circuit board perfectly. We have perfect alignment, I believe. Good to go. And then cap with dividers between the LEDs. 
perfect fit uh, within about half a mil of the board. So can't get much tighter than that. That should do the trick. And here's where the disc Eva is now. Got all the inserts in. Uh, pretty much getting to the point where it's time to go together. And that is what the full stack up will look like. We have to put the fasteners in and we have some more cleanup to do, but that's the first look at full stack. Pretty cool. <laughs> Love it.